Water and power are vital to the development of Australia. Science and engineering can provide them. He was a great dynamic leader, William Hudson. So he arranged for the team uh, from the Griffith and the Murrumbidgee irrigation areas generally to go and see what was happening, to look at the Guthaga Dam particularly as it was being built, uh, to look at the whole of the scheme from Tumut to Guthaga to Adaminibi, and, and we climbed the top of Mount Kosciuszko and felt that we were the kings of the world. We were tremendously impressed. I think the abiding thought that we had was of the scope and the size of the scheme and the way it was coming together. I mean, we went back home as, uh, as disciples of Hudson and, uh, well, what shall I say, uh, <laughs> the proclaimers of the greatness of the snowy scheme. southeastern corner of New South Wales and the snow country of the Australian Alps begin a number of rivers. Fed by melting snows, some of these rivers flow westward to the interior of the continent via the great waterways of the Murray and Murrumbidgee rivers. And so it's intended to stop the rivers draining off to the east this way, down to the sea, and this will be done by damming the rivers and sending the water west. Now this means cutting tunnels right through the mountains and sending the water down the mountainside through these pressure pipelines to join the Murray River, which will then send the water west to the waiting irrigation areas. When we visit the factory later, you can bear in mind that what you see is something of an engineering achievement. French engineers contracting this part of the project explained how the power station would be located a thousand feet inside the mountain. These turbines producing 300,000 kilowatts of electricity will harness the water before it flows into the tumult and to the west. Now we come to the very important extra benefit of this diversion process. The water at the base of the dam is under great pressure from its own weight, and this pressure can be turned into energy. When the Prime Minister pulls the switch, this needle valve opens, the highly pressurised water impinges on the turbines, and away she goes. But before the first switch was pulled, the scheme had been treading on very shaky ground. It came into being under the guise of a federal defence project, uniting the reluctant states of New South Wales, Victoria and South Australia. This arrangement could possibly be challenged in the High Court and the scheme stopped as unconstitutional. It really was constitutionally uh, unsound until we'd spent about £180 million. And Menzies used to say, don't ever get into the, to a court. For example, if we were... Um, uh, seeking to acquire some land, we, we used to negotiate the thing rather than have it go to a court because the constitutional base of the scheme could have been challenged and it wasn't really secured until the states passed their underpinning legislation which led to the Snowy Mountains Agreement. But, but Hudson was, a, was a, a past master at public relations. I mean, he, he wanted to be sure, that, as he put it, that the Australian taxpayer could see what was happening for their dollar. Australia, the young country for you and your children. Australia is the country for get up and go people. A labour force was needed urgently. With the country entrenched in a white Australia policy, the post-war immigration campaign was aimed squarely at Great Britain. These are the people we want, and the more of them, the better. These are the kids, eager to grow up as proud Australians in this great land of ours. Hello, you're listening to Radio National. I'm Robert Williams. Oh, I thought I was going to the high frontier when I saw the adverts in London on the underground. It said you could come to the equivalent of the Klondike and uh, get these fantastic amounts of money by working not terribly hard. And I went out and you could, in fact, actually earn a great deal of money, but uh, it wasn't as simple as I'd been promised. It, it never is, really, is it? <laughs> The base is ready for firing, sir.
party of 400 Norwegians, accustomed to living at sub-zero temperatures, were special... British migration was not meeting the target, and the tall, blonde Norwegians looked like an acceptable alternative. Wives take turns in preparing the warming Scandinavian dishes the men need to keep them fit for their hard work. Norwegians were contracted to build the first dam on the scheme. The Norwegians play hard and work hard, doing a fine job for Australia. Many of them intend to settle down under with their wives and children. Who wouldn't welcome this fine little fellow as a future citizen of Australia? Meanwhile, the drive to recruit displaced people from war-torn Europe was gaining momentum. And selling the idea of a desirable labour force became a tricky balancing act for the Immigration Minister, Arthur Caldwell. They had to look right, but they also had to sign up for two years to do the jobs Australians didn't want. With the condition under which displaced persons can emigrate to Australia. Now, full name. Here. Yes. The brief, in simple words, was to take the fit, the young, the able. That's all. Thank you very much. You know, the sun bronzed Bondi lifesaver. It reflected what society and what government wanted. Selection of people isn't perfect. You've got to uh, impose criteria which disregards the fact that a person was a doctor or, or, a, or a dentist or an engineer and say to him, as at the time, we're going to, if we select you, we're selecting you as unskilled labour for two years where you will work where the government sends you. Now, Cornwall stopped me in Canberra. I was there on some union business and knowing I was there, he sought me out and stopped me and asked me what would be my attitude, the union's attitude and the Communist Party's attitude towards the influx of a large number of non-English speaking migrant people. And I told him as far as, he told me it was for the purpose of building the snowy scheme. I said, well, as far as I'm concerned, they'll be welcome. Now, in the ACTU, however, there was still a degree of racism. In the discussions I heard people in the debate at the ACTU Congress talk about the Balts. They said, that no one wants the Balts. They didn't say the dirty bastards kicked them out. But in, in the discussion, their attitude was opposed to the Balts. from miles around as the men from the snowy river ride again. Specialists in various fields came, like Bernie Breler, a mechanical engineer from the Hartz Mountains in Germany, Con Christie, a motor mechanic from Greece, Hans Helting, a Dutch electrician, Vasto Pacci, an Italian instrument maker, and Alex Bergen, a Swedish power station mechanic. The color chart kept shifting to the south of Europe, and soon the man from Snowy River had a new look and a different sound. <laughs> and, and, and the night before we went, you and I, we went in the night before singing. You remember we went in the tunnel yeah, singing? Oh, yes. In the oh, local driver singing, singing, singing. And when we got to the fight, the foreman said, you and you out. 